the January transfer window has been and gone, and we have five new arrivals in at the team, including a Champions League runner-up. Let's get into it and find out who's arrived at the club. Welcome guys to the Red Dead Revival, now here for episode 49 of our Road to Glory series here on FM21. Very, very close now to that 50 number, only one away. It's pretty crazy we're already this far into the save. And as I've just mentioned in the intro, we have indeed been and gone through the January transfer window. And it's been very busy indeed. Five new arrivals, a good chunk of players have left as well. Not quite what I initially planned, but a lot of bids came in for lots of different teams. And a lot of them I didn't feel we could really say no to. Of course, guys, if you missed last episode where we took part in the deciding match for the Europa League and also up against Borussia Mock and Gladbach, there'll be a link right above me so I can see exactly how that game, or those games even, took place and how we got on in those as well. And of course, guys, if you do enjoy today's video, do make sure to drop a like down onto it. And if you do want to keep up to date with any more of my content, such as the Red Dead Revival, then do make sure to hit that subscribe button and to ring that notification bell notified whenever my content here on YouTube goes live. Now though, we get straight into this episode here today. We're only going to take on the one match today, which is in the German Cup. We take on Nuremberg in the third round of the Cup. We have an opportunity to reach the quarter final, which I think is the furthest we've ever reached, if I remember rightly, in the series so far. I can't actually quite remember off the top of my head. And also we'll go through all of our transfers today. We'll go straight into that transfer history page and see exactly who has joined, who has left. It's been a very busy time, both in the summer and in the January, which of course has just been and gone. In terms of who has left the club though, so you are aware, first of all, the big name on the list, I did mention him in the last episode, possibly leaving, there was interest in him, and that was Alex Garcia. We only signed him last January, we signed him from Corinthians over in Brazil, and he's now gone from us to China to Beijing Guangdong, 17 million pounds. I think it could rise a little bit higher as well. I can't quite remember the top of my head, but it was 17 million all up front initially. And he had a decent time of us, played 24 games over the course of the 12 months. Very decent, consistent player. He got seven assists in the league in those games. I was happy with him. He did the job. We made almost 10 million pounds on him as well. Not bad at all. It was a bit of a shame he had to go, but I couldn't really say no. He was about, what, 28? So he wasn't probably going to get much better than that in terms of his value. He was only valued about 8 or 9 million, so it was almost double or over double what he was valued at. So Garcia has now left. We also sold Ibrahima Diallo. We signed him a couple of seasons ago. He was awful, and he's now gone back to England where we signed him from. We doubled our money, bought him in for two. He left for four. That was just Diallo. He didn't work, and I'm glad I made some money off of him in the end. We then also loaned out one of our youngsters, Manuel Ritz. He is one of the players who's come from our youth team. He's gone to the second Bundesliga. This player I'm quite excited for. Maybe could one day get into our first team. But he's gone over to Hanover. Hopefully he can get some game time. A few youngsters either left on permanent deals or out on loan. I'm not going to focus on those. But we sold two more players. Lucas Mule, who we signed in the summer. He'd only played twice, both in the Europa League. Hadn't played at all in the league. He asked to leave. I said yes, we got basically our money back and a little bit extra, we bought it for 2, sold it for 2.5, I was fine with that. There is a reason why he left, I will show you that reason very shortly. And finally, Christian Fructal he has gone, he went to Borussia Mönchengladbach just to become their third choice keeper. He was our third choice, we were offered 300,000 maybe, rising to 400. He only had 18 months left on his deal and I have bought another third choice keeper anyway, so Fructal has now left. We made some money on him. I was pretty happy with that. That right there, though, is all of our sales and all the players who have left. As I say, we brought in five new players in terms of the first one and one who I think is a really decent bit of business on a free transfer from Uruguay from Nacional over there in Uruguay is Christian Olivia or Oliver. I'm not too sure how to pronounce his name, but he's a really decent player, a free star player. When we actually signed him, he was three and a half, but he's valued straight away at 6.5 million, comes in on a free transfer and is a really good option for us as a depth player or even as a starter as either the central midfielder or the defensive midfielder as the regista. So his is Christian Olivia, and yeah, a really decent player. I think can do a really good job. And he's played a couple so far. He's been okay, not fantastic, but he doesn't as of yet speak German, which of course doesn't help him at the end of the day. 
After that, we then sign a player called Peter Pedersen. He is now coming to become our new third choice keeper to replace Fructal. He's 18, got a decent chunk of potential. He also has fantastic termination of 20, and he's decent, 18. He may never ever actually play for us, but he goes straight into our youth team, can offer us a little bit of extra depth just in net. After that, my director of football actually went for this player. I had no intention issue to sign any new centre-backs, but this is the reason why Lucas Mule has now left the club, and that is because the director of football signed Christian Mosquera over from Valencia. It reckons he's a right-back by trade. He's not. He is a centre-back all day long, and a very, very competent centre-back at that with a decent chunk of potential. Three and a half star already, possibly rising as high as four and a half star. They're at eight mil. We only signed him for five and a half. Whatever has better make some profit off him 18 determination really good physically decent mentals very decent technicals a ball playing defender as well exactly how we like to play and yeah he's not done bad three appearances so far almost a seven average rate for a center back not bad at all i think he'd be a really good player we then brought in a new backup left back in abdu conte just on loan from walls he probably won't play very much but he has come in on loan and the reason why is De Chiara as our backup is okay, but he's not fantastic because I felt a little bit of extra depth won't hurt to have. So that right there is Abdu Conte. I have actually used him over on my Twitch save with Norwich. We used him in the first two seasons over there. He was all right, did a decent job. I reckon he could do a similar job for us either as the wing back on the cover or even to cover as a centre back, which he can play if required. So not a bad bit of business there, just on a loan for the next six months. But finally, our what I think anyway will be our replacement for Alex Garcia, and I mentioned the intro about a Champions League runner-up player arriving at the club, that is Marco Verratti, the very, very short midfielder, only five foot five, the Italian international, the PSG player in real life. He has joined, and I couldn't really help myself here. I always like to have an older player in around the team, because we've got Jimenez and Ramsey. Ramsey hasn't worked out, don't get me wrong. Jimenez has been okay. But I think Verratti is a different kettle of fish. His technicals and his mentals are phenomenal. Yes, physically, he's dead as anything. But he's going to play a register where you don't need any physicals other than your balance, which he still has. So I think he could be a really good player for us. So I hope he will. He's on 40 grand a week and PSG are paying, I think, 150 grand of his wages as well. He only has a deal until the end of this year. So basically, if he's crap, we'll just let him go. And if he works out, then fantastic. But we signed him for 2.5 million. It could rise to 3 million if he plays 50 games. But if he's really, really bad, I'll let him go in the summer. We'll bring someone else in. But we will wait and see. But that right there is all of our signings. And I really do hope that Verratti can really help push us on that little bit extra. Whether it be for Europa League football again this season or even Champions League football. I don't quite know. But I'm quite excited with those who have come in. I really think our squad is shaping up to be a very, very strong one. And we're in a very good position. In terms as well of how we got on since the last episode, of course, where it's been over a month jump because we had the winter break, we have played a couple of games since last time out because, of course, last time it was up against Gladbach. And we've done all right. We had the friendlies. We did a tour of the Middle East, but that doesn't really matter. We came back to league football with a very respectable draw initially. We actually nearly won this. We took the lead twice in this game away at Dortmund. And we ended up drawing it to all goals from Pellegri and from Hikmet. And then we followed that up with a win over one of our rivals for the top four spots in the league. We beat Leverkusen 1-0. Really not sure how because we only had about one shot all game. And we just defended really valiantly in the match itself with a very respectable 1-0 win. However, after that we then took on Gloiterfurt who had only won one game all season. And we lost to them. 1-0. It was awful. We were so bad going forward. We created absolutely nothing. We did not deserve to get anything from this game at all. I was fuming afterwards. But in the Bundesliga, life is still going very well. We are sitting fifth at the moment. We are level on points with fourth place. And we are two points clear of Wolfsburg, who sit in seventh position. So things are going well. And I'm hoping we can just push on and keep on going in both the league and the other competitions we are in. Of course, today we are playing in the cup. That is what we're going to be focused on now. So let's get into it. I'll run through our lineup and we can take a look exactly who's going to be playing in this game. It is a bit of a rotated squad, but this is how we are going. Short starts in net. Rafael Torres, Ricardo Ley, and Mosquera starting as a back three. A lot of players who don't normally start Ricardo Ley, especially, but he is developing quite nicely. One of our young centre backs looking very decent, who of course we signed in the summer. Ludwig comes in at right back. Verratti starts as the DM. Conte comes in at left back. Oliver and Garcia both starting midfield. Garcia, there was a lot of interest, but no one in the end came in for him in the January window. 
and in Jimenez and Zakiri both starting up front. That is how we are going to be lining up for this game. I'm confident we can get the job done. We still have a lot of talent on the bench as well if we do need it. But let's get into it and let's see how we do get on here. Up against Nuremberg in the third round of the German Cup. We get through, as I said earlier, into the quarterfinals. And whatever the case, the board have only wanted us to get to the third round anyway. So we've got as far as we needed to anyway. In terms of what I say to that, I'm going to point the finger so we should be winning this one. Based on recent form and some, we probably should be, if I am honest with you. Lads looking pretty good other than Conte and Schultz. Pretty happy with that team talk. Let's get into it though. We'll get into the preview. We'll see how Nuremberg are going to be lining up. I mean, you look at the form there. We've only got one win in our last five, but we have only lost once in our last five as well, which isn't too bad. Not too bad at all. And Nuremberg's form is pretty dreadful. Four defeats in their last five. Hopefully, we can inflict even more pain onto them in their season so far. They've also got our former striker, Robert Glatzel, up front for them, the player who didn't score for us in something like 14 appearances. He actually has got a few goals for Nuremberg so far this season, but hopefully we do not see him come and haunt as much like Palaya Moria did a few episodes ago when we took on Schalke. So far in this game, very quiet, nothing really to see from it. Well, as I'm saying, it, there is now a highlight. Nuremberg signed with a throw in a dangerous area. Let's not concede, please, lads. Decent head of that from Conte. Let's get the ball, let's counter-attack, come on. Okay, not great so far. Nuremberg keeping the ball quite nicely. It's not... Oh, great little interception there from Marco Verratti. Lovely little pass to Kiri. There's a lot of space in this left. We have found Pablo Garcia. A chance for the Mexican, maybe. Surely a goal. Nope, because he's just put it straight into the goalkeeper's hands. Oh, my days. That was awful. Another highlight now. Nuremberg starting with it. They've got to play actually off the pitch with an injury. Hopefully that can maybe benefit us. But as I'm saying, oh, it's a great tackle and clearance from Verratti. A great little showing from the little man in this game. Zakiri with the ball. Now he goes for it. He tries to think the keeper. I don't know why. It's another easy save for the Nuremberg keeper. Not good enough from us in this game so far. A couple of decent opportunities and both of them have been wasted. It is saying we should maybe sell off Garcia. I will probably do that at half time then because I don't want him getting an aggravated injury. It reckons it's only a bruised knee currently. I'll take him off as a result. We're in a hard time, no, not too bad. We're looking like the better team of the two. So get back out there and grab that goal for us. They mainly seem okay about it. I say to the defenders, I'm looking to make the difference. I say to the midfielders, not good enough from them. And they seem okay about it. Garcia, though, off the hick met, straight swap. Let's get into second half. Hopefully, get ourselves a goal and get ourselves through to the next round of the cup here. Definitely, we are looking the better of the two sides. Nuremberg haven't had a shot on target all game. We've had, I think it said five before it got into this highlight. I'm not entirely sure, though. We've got a highlight, though. We've got starting from our goal kick. Come on, Hikmet to Conte. Overly ambitious, that ball. We're never getting into that. I do wonder if we should maybe make a change up front as well. We will give it a few more minutes before I do make that decision. Hopefully Nuremberg don't go and score with only their first shot on target. But it would be FM, wouldn't it, if that was to happen? Awful pass from Nuremberg. Look with good interception. Come on, lads. Let's go. Torres lumps it up. And are we going to get there? I don't think so. No, we're not. Okay, the keeper's just wasting time right now. We're only 55 minutes in there, apparently trying to waste time. Always got to hang on. Raul Jimenez, play it, mate. He has done... Oh, are Nuremberg going to get a red card? I think they are. It's, yep, indeed. A second yellow. Nuremberg down to 10. 35 minutes to play. We have got one hell of an opportunity now as a result of that second yellow card. We're going to go and encourage the lads. I'm also going to make a change up front. We're going to get Skretterberg on for Zakiri. Come on, lads. They're down to 10. There's no excuse for us whatsoever. And I'm saying this, there is a highlight for us. Come on, let's go and get another chance. Ricardo Lay to Verratti, who looks absolutely tiny in the match engine. He really, really does. Hikmet now. Verratti, lovely ball. That is exactly why I wanted to sign in. The range of passing he has available to him. Really, really good stuff. Oh, nice little one two there. Hikmet just on the pitch. He's got a goal. Comes on at half time and he gets us 1 0 up. The Turkish international, who did, in fact, I mentioned it last episode, he's won both the Copper Trophy and European Golden Boy. He's had that fantastic of a last 12 months, both for us and also for Besiktas. He is a very, very good prospect. He most certainly isn't to have won that. It's certainly a very, very good sign for him at such a young stage in his career. 
And as I'm saying all this though, Nuremberg have a chance. Will we see their first actual chance in this game or will we get a chance to counter-attack as we have done so many times already in this game? It looks like it's going to be that Oliver intercepts the ball. Come on, Skretterberg fresh on the pitch to probably seal the game off. It's a fantastic sliding tackle from the Nuremberg player. I don't know who it was. He's been put in though. Oliver is blocked as well. We really should be at about 2 to up by now. The chances we've wasted this game is not good enough. We're going to make another substitution. I'm going to get Oliver off the pitch for Zakowski just because he looks a little bit knackered right now. We don't want an injury to him. Of course, we've been praying only just having arrived at the club. But into the last few minutes we go. Will there be any late drama or will we just see this game out? I will certainly take a 1-0. Most certainly will do. Get us into that next round. Looks like it's going to happen. Into stoppage time we go. We have qualified for the quarterfinals of the cup. A really convincing performance, even really before the red card. We look like the better side and we've proven it by knocking out Nuremberg and going through. Of course, Nuremberg actually knocked us out last year as well. So a little bit of revenge this time around. Good stuff, lads. A Hikmet goal to win the game. Top, top stuff. Of course, in terms of the schedule, we're going to be back for next episode, though, guys. We scroll down, we'll have a look. We have both the German Cup quarterfinal coming up very shortly and also the Europa League. We've had the draw for it. We've got FC Porto in the Europa League. And as it is episode 50, what we will do is we will do a triple header for next episode. We will do the German Cup quarterfinal. We'll do the derby match with Mainz and also the first leg of our Europa League first round knockout stage match. Really rolls off the tongue, doesn't it? We will do all three of those games for next episode, which of course will be episode 50. So that'll all be coming in next episode, guys. Overall though guys, that brings this episode here to a close and I'll be honest, I'm pretty happy with that result and I'm really happy with the players who we've now got into the squad. I really think we're in a really good position to push on. There were a few other targets I had who just didn't quite join us and they joined other clubs. A little bit frustrated with that because they would have really been difference makers I think for the team but they didn't join us in the end but I think even so we're in a good position going forward I think the rest of the season we can definitely push on hopefully get some form of European football again and it looks like maybe we could possibly be in some contention for a little bit of silverware maybe the German Cup or the Europa League if we get a little bit of luck in those competitions but next episode is going to be one to look forward to a lot of knockout football going on in it Hope you get some good results and hopefully guys you've enjoyed today's video. If you did, make sure to chuck a like down onto it. And of course, if you're not already and you do want to keep up with any more of my content, do make sure to hit that subscribe button and to ring that notification bell when any of my content here on YouTube goes live. But guys, thank you very much for watching and I will see you again next time.